Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Toad TV. I am Mary Beth. I am Helen. We are the creative hands and minds behind Toad Hollow, and we are here today to talk to you about books. It is six months have gone by. Yes. In 2022. First. Yes. Officially how, in the second half. How on <laughs> earth did that happen? I do not know. However, six months. Six months in. So we're uh, doing a quick six month recap uh, you know favorite book a couple other things uh categories that we came up with just to do a, a recap of our reading so far right well yeah, this has been um the similar things have been going around tiktok a lot and we thought oh let's do that with some of our books right so we're gonna share some things with you whether you want us to or not you get this <laughs> okay uh shall we start uh sure okay all right First on the list, I have them written down. First on the list, favorite book of the year. I'm pretty sure we're both. Pretty sure. Uh, no, actually, I know we are. <laughs> and then we'll come as no surprise to anybody. Uh, the House on the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. Loved it. Um, just loved it. Loved it. Loved it. It, <laughs> it will be a hard fought win for somebody else to come in and yeah, take that one. That's as a matter of fact, tough. it is like since it's my five star. It was a five star. It's like. Um, skewing how I review other books because I there are books like well yeah that was five star I really enjoyed that book but no nah, it's not the Cerulean Sea it's not the Cerulean Sea and I'm gonna have, I have to have a couple that are 4.75 right yeah I got a 4.5 4.75 it's just it's just, you're almost there but you're not you're not I do have a Cerulean couple of five sea. stars but very very few this yeah. year yeah yes the house on the Cerulean Sea and as a matter of fact it could have fallen into a couple of other categories that I had to think hard to do something that wasn't I used it on that. my other one because the last one because it's just like no that's it so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, least favorite book. Oh, before we do this, I would just like to say thank you to sister number three, because we are both using these. These are our daily journals. Um, we're keeping track of daily things. If you've seen our videos before this, you know, we've, we've done this before, but we do a lot of our reading stuff in here. So we are using these all yeah. the time. And I've done a page just for today um i apologize for the noise it is the fourth of july weekend and we have the biplanes flying along the beach we had to wait to long. film this because we had um landscaping all around right. us so and the windows are wide open yeah um but we're here right. it's now it's all sounds of the, the beach yeah so okay all right so least favorite book. least favorite book was the prayer box by lisa wingett um it was, it's one of her earlier books, because um, I love her book. She's like a go-to author for me. Uh, I did this on Audible. It was completely overwritten, overwritten, and then the ending was just way too perfect and out of the blue. It was just, I mean, the ending just really annoyed me. Okay. So. All right. Mine is New Corpse in Town by Lucy Quinn. It's um, part of... A trilogy or actually I think they're way more than that it's supposed to be a cozy mystery that's set on seal island in Maine and um, luckily I did not pay for it I downloaded it for Kindle Unlimited it was I could not stay with it it was just it was too simple it didn't it did not catch me at all yeah. so um, some people may love this it just was not for me um, so that one is actually my one DNF so far this year, I did not finish it. I had two DNFs, but I didn't use them, so. Okay, all right, uh, your prettiest book. We actually brought show and tell for those. Okay. Mine is The River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. Uh, this is a, an Illumicrate version. Um, so you've got the pretty edges. Um, the gorgeous end papers. Look at these end papers. And if you don't feel like using your dust jacket, it's just a beautiful, beautiful book, and it was a really enjoyable book. I enjoyed that one. I, I like that really, one a lot. I think December, the second one's coming out, so I'm really looking forward to getting the second one in this series. So, yeah, that was, that, was, that was a good one. Yeah. That was a good one. So. My prettiest book is The Library of Legends by Janie Chan. Um, I was... I, this is just such a beautiful cover. I we love picked it. it on the book of the month for the cover. Right. Um, the story, it had 
uh, two kind of parts to it. There's a group of university students that are marching through China during the Chinese-Japanese War, and they are protecting the books that are the Library of Legends. Um, so there is the whole point, a part of the students on the road and that kind of thing. And then there is a magical realism part to the book. I adored, I mean, adored the magical realism part. Did not like the in the real life part oh, quite as much. <laughs> So, um, yeah, communism is just coming into play with, uh, with China, and it's, there's a lot of politics in it that I did not enjoy, but uh, the magical realism part, absolutely loved. So, and it's an absolutely gorgeous cover. I think I wound up giving that one um, three and a half stars. Three stars. I gave it three stars because I like the magical realism part so much. Okay. All right. Um, longest book. My longest book was The House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Moss at a whopping 803 pages. I listened to it. It was like 24 hours or something. Audible. Yeah. I thought that might be it, but actually mine is The Priory of the Iron Tree that came in at a whopping 838. Okay. So that one just outed it. Um, I liked the Priory of the Orange Tree a lot. <laughs> I really, really like that book a lot. So um, actually, that is one of my five stars. I, I really enjoyed that one. Okay. A lot of um, fantasy in that, but so good. So, so good. The Sarah and that J. Moss one I read. Is, is, um, it's an enjoyable... To me, Sarah J. Moss is, can only be taken in on Audible. Um, and... It's enjoyable while I'm listening, but then I just forget. Like I'm listening to the second one in the Crescent City series now, and it's not that I'm like, ooh, I get to listen to my book, but I'll put my book on, and I'll be like, I get into it while I'm listening to it, mm -hmm. but then it's just, eh, whatever. Okay. So. All right. Um, all right. A book that didn't meet your expectations. Well, I did use one of my DNFs. Okay. This is The Toy Makers by, by Robert Dinsdale. Um, this one was touted to me for Lovers of the Night Circus. It's an enchanted toy store right up my alley. Um, there's a little bit about the toy store in the first half of the book that I got through. Um, but there's a lot of petulant boy uh, boy brothers because you know they're you know, other <laughs> kind of brothers, brothers right? um petulant brothers um and then they get into their father's traumatic war experiences and that's why i dropped it, it okay was a, a russian yeah i didn't know okay it was not for me there was no enchanted toy store <laughs> okay all right mine is uh the kiss quotient by Helen Wang. I saw it on so many people's lists last year. Love this book. Five stars. Can't wait to read the rest of them. Um, I gave it two stars. The main character has autism and um, has not had a lot of experience with sex, so she hires somebody to teach her about sex. There is a lot of sex in this book. <laughs> Which you would expect because she's hiring somebody to teach her about sex, um, which didn't bother me that much. Um, but wide open door. They used curse words in almost every sentence that kind of cheapened it for me. Also, when they break up, he thinks that she doesn't like him because of her father's his father's criminal past. She thinks that he's pitying her because of the autism and. I mean, she's a very, very, very high-functioning autistic person. Um, and the fact that he is literally and figuratively holding her hand through most of this book, through all different kinds of situations because of her autism, the fact that she, he, she thinks he pities her because of it just makes no sense to me whatsoever. Um, yeah, not for me. It, does, it just felt very, very flat for me. Um, so I was very frustrated at the end of the book. I was just skimming the chapters just to be able to finish it. So that one was 
big disappointment. Okay. All right. Um, book that exceeded your expectations. Uh, mine I just finished recently is Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Cosimano. Um, I knew that I, I, I had seen that a lot of people said that they liked it. It was a fun beachy read kind of thing. I really, really, really liked it. And that was one of the ones um, that fell to my TJ Klune expectations on a five star read because no, on a normal year it would get five stars, um, but it's not. The House on Cerulean Sea is not written that well. I mean, it's written well, but not as well as. Yeah. Um, it is so much fun, and it's a different take on like a mystery. Um, you know, someone bumbling into a mystery, and um, you know, she's hired to be a hit woman, uh, single mother hit woman. It's just, it's so much fun. Good characters, fun side characters, fun plot. Uh, really, really enjoyed it. Uh, and I immediately bought the second one, uh, and the third one's not even out yet. So. Okay. Uh, mine is How High We Go in the Dark by, um... Sequoia Nakamatsu. That's it. Sequoia Nakamatsu. Um, this one was, we heard about this on the... Currently Reading Podcast. On their uh, indie their press podcast, list, the indie press list, yeah. their indie press list, and it sounded really interesting, different, a take on the pandemic, and um, so I thought, okay, this sounds kind of interesting. Let's try it out outside our comfort comfort zone. Right. I really, really, really like this book a lot. Um, it wound up winning my best book for April, I think it was, or whatever month I finished it in. It's just, it's so different from anything that I expected. And it's one of the few other that still sticks with me. Yeah. Oh, my I mean, God. Every time somebody mentions that book, it's like a certain parts of it, good or bad, just yeah. really. It's just, it's, it's, it's a really, really good book. So I enjoyed that one very, very much and was not expecting that much from it. And it just, I loved it. Yeah. Really, really loved it. Okay, um, new favorite author, T.J. Klune. I was thinking of using T.J. Klune. This is one of the ones that I was thinking of using for, but I figured I knew about the Under the Whispering Door last year, so I couldn't consider him a new favorite. I did it because the Cerulean Sea on top of the Under the Whispering Door cemented him as, if he writes a book, it's mine. Yeah. I will read it, um, and he, he has to go a long way to get himself off my automatic buy. Okay. All right. Mine that I did was Alice Oseman. She is the author of Heartstoppers, the Heartstoppers series. Um, those books just hit me in the feels in all the right ways. I adored them. I went through all four of them very, very quickly. They are graphic novels, so you can go through them in an hour, an hour and a half. I mean, it does not take very long to go through. I just adored them so that um i love the characters i love the people in them well those are the characters i, just, I love the storyline <laughs> i just loved everything about it so she is my one of my new favorite authors that and we're I a couple will... episodes in on the netflix series and they're very very true to the, very the graphic novel yeah. so it's really good yeah no i like um, it very much all right um book that made you cry lily and the octopus author I was going to, this is another one I was going to do, The House on the Cerulean Sea, but I decided since I used it before, I won't do it this one. Stephen Raleigh, um, this book is a wonderful, wonderful book, it's especially being dog lovers <laughs> and dog owners and having lost one recently. This book killed me. <laughs> It is, like, I finished it in January, and still, I cannot talk about this book, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't read Without it yet. I have to read getting it. getting emotional. Um, it's just so beautifully written about someone who loved their dog very, very much. Okay. That's got to go on my list very soon. Yeah. All right. Maybe not this week. No, maybe. <laughs> no, definitely not this week. Um, a book that made me cry is... The House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Moss. There are parts of it that just... I would be walking the dogs in Montclair 
and be sobbing because I was listening to it on Audible and it just made me cry. There are certain parts that made me very mad, but there are certain parts that, oh my God, I cried so hard at. Um, there's one part, again, with stupid dogs, <laughs> where the city is under siege and all the wolves, all the packs come to help because there are children in need and that's what dogs that's do. That's what dogs do. So, see? <laughs> cry. I said to Helen, when you reach this part, you will know what I'm talking yeah. about. I was walking and thank God I did not meet anybody because literally tears <laughs> coursing down my cheeks. Okay. A book that made you happy. I tried not to use it, but it just makes me smile every time I think about it. So the house on the cerulean sea. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Those kids. I yeah. mean, uh, that, and the story, and that just makes me happy. I, I was writing the list. I'm like, you know, I may just use one of our Audible credits, and I may just do it again as an Audible. Um, I just love that. Book. Okay. So. I would be okay with that. <laughs> um, maybe we do that in the car. Oh, okay. All right, maybe. Yeah. I chose uh, The Extraordinaries by T.J. Clune. <laughs> I was going to do Heartstopper because there were a couple of places where it just made me smile so much, but I figured I used it already. So I would use The Extraordinaries by T.J. Klune. Um, there is one of the main characters, the main character is on the spectrum, and um, he has a friend that is the right kind of friend. He just is there for him. They have been there for each other since... I think kindergarten and they just are such beautiful friendship it's such a beautiful friendship between the two of them um there are also the extraordinaries in the title are kind of superhero people who have extraordinary abilities um and it's just the way the main character feels about one of the extraordinaries and how his friend puts up with these feelings you know he has this it's a 16 year old boy who has such a crush on one of these extraordinaries um but it's how his friend helps him and supports him and it's just they're wonderful so the extraordinaries by tj clune immediately after finishing it i ordered the second one and got it and the third one is coming out july 19th and i will be getting that one too <laughs> because I love them again and it's also you know T.J. Clune so pretty much anything he writes I will buy yeah um but yeah no it's a it was a, a great book I really really loved that book so um yeah that one made me very very happy okay. all right so I did a quick recap okay my goal my reading goal for the year is 60 books I read 30 books January through June so all right I'm right on track I read 7,603 pages, all fiction, nine books, five ebooks, and 16 audiobooks. Okay. All right. All right, my goal for the year was 70 books. I have read, so, so far, I have read 54 books. According to my story graph charts, um, I have read 15,623 pages. Um, I was feeling so good about my 7,000 pages. All of them are non-fiction, or fiction. I don't, I don't do not. <laughs> I have read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, I have read 17 physical books. Twelve um on ebook ebooks and twenty-one audiobooks. Um, so that's where we are right now. Let us know. I would like to know what is the book that surprised you the most? And your favorite book for so far. Okay. So favorite book so far this year and which book surprised you the most? Right. That's what I'd like to know. So share that with us.
Yes, okay. please, in the comments. Yeah. Um, anything else? That's it. Yeah. We hope you guys have a wonderful full fr I will be able to get this out. We hope you guys have a wonderful 4th of July weekend. Um, doing something fun. You know, fireworks, barbecues, whatever. Yeah, it's going to be a beautiful weekend, I think. Yes, probably. it is. A little, a little warm, but uh, I mean, it is the 4th of July. So. Right. Um, yeah, there's an absolutely gorgeous breeze coming in right now. Yeah, no, it's, it's lovely out here in our sewing room. We're loving it. Um, so yeah, have a wonderful week. Uh, weekend. Are we podcasting on Monday since it's the 4th? No, we'll do Tuesday. Okay, so we will be podcasting on Tuesday. We will see you then. Yes, go forth and create. Bye.